Good morning. Uh, welcome to Frank's School. I'm going to call this mistake in timber framing layout. <clears throat> I found a mistake. Yesterday I said I was going to cut these pieces and lay it out on the ground before I went further. And when I did so, I found a mistake. Uh, and what it amounted to, and I should have known, uh, this gap in between the, the, uh, the window jam or the door jam, it has to be 48 inches because pallets are 48 inches long and a pallet is going to go in there. I, I should have known that. I had it at 46 and 3 quarters. I was getting all confused. So that is wrong. And when I make that, uh, when I make that wider like that, similarly, this was wrong. These on either side were wrong. It turns out they have to be 41 and 3 quarters. Uh, they, they can't be quite so big. But that works out. <clears throat> That's a tight fit. Three pallets, two jams. Uh, uh, it, it's a tight fit. Uh, to, to go in there because the pellets are unforgiving. They're like a factory edge, uh, new pellets. They, they're almost like a piece of plywood. You can count on them. They're going to be square and they're going to be 48 by, by 40. Now the damaged ones are all twisty and so it's, it'll, be, uh, well, it'll be a challenge. So mistake in timber framing. I found it. I'll, 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 I'll do better. This is the 11th incidentally in this series. Uh, called, which I'm calling uh, a guided building of a folk hut. Now, one of the things, I think I'll get rid, rid of this stuff now. I, I can get rid of this thing. One of the things that, that came of yesterday, though, was that I decided that I should do a mock-up uh, of, of what I'm building, uh, right, right down by my shelf. That, that's going to be more practical. It'll still be remote, or I mean, it'll still be off-grid. But, it'll, but it won't be remote. Yeah, I'm not going to be going up in the woods and back and up in the woods and back, uh, partly because my, my, the two that were helping me are going to be gone for two months. Uh, so I'm going to make a mock-up, and that's going to be kind of funny in a way, because I'm going to build that mock-up <laughs> really short so that I can do the roof without having to be so high on a ladder, and I'll be able to film things much better. It's going to almost look like a a folk hut for a, a, a dwarf or something, or a child, uh, because it's gonna, it's just gonna, believe me, it's gonna look funny. But anyway, I decided I'm gonna do that, so it'll be off grid still, no intention of, if I have electric there, I'd take an extension cord. Um, uh, now, I wanna just use this time to show you one other thing about cutting. Um, when, when I saw, uh, whenever you, uh, have to, have to uh, working with a piece of wood straight from the sawmill, uh, you, you need to pick one end and square it. Uh, you, 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 you can't assume that that's going to be square. You're going to have to pick one end and square it. Now to get that square, the skill saw, the table on the skill saw, it's called the table, it's only about that big, that works for this kind of carpentry. You can just eye the table, it's square, and you don't have to use a framing square or a common a framing square or what you'd use. You don't have to do, do all that motion. It's going to be close enough to just use the table uh, of the skill saw as you do it. And so that's the way you're going to get square. Uh, now, when you get your dimension, uh, once you've got one in square, uh, and that you should pick, if there's anything there that's bad, pick the worst end and, and cut off anything that's bad. Uh, and make that a small cut. Now I'm going to assume it's out here. And when you go to make your measurement, use chalk. Uh, you know, uh, this kind of a pencil, of course, would break the lead right away on rough sawn. And, and a carpenter's pencil, those flat big pencils, I had a carpenter once, a professional look at that and said, don't give me one of them, them logs. Uh, he called it, because he, he was a Finnish carpenter. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, chalk works fine, even though it's a quarter inch thick. And I was going to say, the three things I always keep in my pocket, or because of my lifestyle, is a pen knife, piece of chalk, and uh, some matches. Anyway, uh, chalk will work fine. So there's the end. When you get your, when you get your dimension, say you're going to make it, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, two, two, foot, uh, two foot four inches. Here's the way you make your mark. You do it like that. You don't do this. I mean, I, I see guys doing it, professionals, on TV all the time. No, you, you, you should do it with two marks, and that is very precise. It marks the point. And then when you go to saw, um, you just, you, you, and you also have to decide which side is scrap. You put an X 
for the scrap. Now they do do that. I see them do that. That means which side is your saw going to run on? Because the saw is going to take out probably an eighth of an inch or so. And so it's going to run on this side. And, and what you try to do then is you just split that. Split that right in half. Right there. If you did put a, a pencil line on there uh, with a framing square or a chalk line, uh, you know, if I, I don't actually have a Let's say you did have a, a square, and you and you uh, and you made your chalk line there, which I, I mostly don't don't even do because I just use the uh, I just aim at it and use the table on the so anyway, what you try to do then is split that line in half. Then you've got a pretty accurate cut. All right, I think that's enough for now. And and what <laughs> tomorrow I'm hoping I can give you a video of what I've, of, of the beginning of this mock-up. Bye for now.